In this video, I will give you five tips on how you can improve the cutting performance from your Swiss Army knife blade with your technique. So stay tuned. Hello YouTube, welcome to another Swiss Army knife tip and trick video. Today's topic is how you can improve your carving technique. Carving and whittling is a physical process and this process has a lot to do with different angles, leverage forces, dynamics and stuff like this. I make carving workshops since 10 years now and I'm not really a carving teacher who shows all these fantastic traditional old Swedish carving technique stuff from old books. I'm much more a pragmatic person. I show, I show techniques who makes physically sense for me. And I show things from which I know that this works for children with the experience from over 400 workshops. And what works for children, children works also for adults. <laughs> I like to compare carving with swimming because these children who learn to swim like this with the head over the waterline. So they are never able to, to swim fast or long distance because they have too much resistance in the water. But the children who learn to put the head on the water and to, to swim in a horizontal position and to push off at the start and make an arrow. So these children, they swim faster with half the energy. And this is the same with carving. The better your carving technique is, the less power and strength you need for a cut. And the less power and strength you need for a cut, the more control and sensitivity you can put into, a ta in, into the cut to complete the task. And as more control and sensitivity you can put into a cut, the safer is your work with a knife. And this is what I want to achieve with the children on my workshops. That's why it's super important for me that they learn an efficient, proper carving technique. And what works for children works also for adults, because the principle of carving is the same, doesn't matter if you are a child or an adult. I'm sure many of you have already a good carving technique, but I'm not sure if you exactly know why you have a good carving technique or if you make it only intuitive good. Because if you know why you make this technique good, you can explain this to another person, and this is another level. And this is also something I would like to achieve with this video. But now, let's jump into my five technique tips for you. I'm sure that most of you made the first carving experience with the forehand grip and the push cut. This is like a beginner usually start. That's why let's focus on this technique and let's find out how we can improve this technique. Tip number one. Hold the knife with the fist grip as close as possible to the ricasso. So this is the ricasso. And carve as close as possible to the ricasso. So don't carve here. Start your cut here. Many people hold the knife too far in the back of the handle, like this. And if they cut, they have a big distance between the end of the hand and the point where the knife penetrates into the wood. And this distance makes that as soon the cut needs a bit strength, the wrist will bend like this. And like this, you have a bad power transition from the hand to the blade. So let me explain this physical process with this knife model. So if you hold the knife with the fist grip too far on the back end of the handle and you want to push, you have almost no power because this distance, this leverage is very big. So if you hold the knife on the front end of the handle, like this, you have much more power because you have a smaller distance. And if you cut, if you don't cut in the, on the middle of the blade, if you cut on the roots of the blade, here as close as possible to the ricasso, you have the maximum of power. 
because you have the smallest distance, you have the smallest leverage like this. And like this, you have the best power transition. And like this, you don't have just the maximum of, of power, you have also the maximum of control. And this is about the same with writing your name on a piece of paper. So if this is the piece of paper and this is your pencil, you hold the pencil uh, uh, very close to the tip and now you can write your name perfect. Now try out, go back three, three centimeters and write again your name. And you realize that you lose control. And as far away from the tip you hold the, the pencil, as less control you have. And this is the same while carving. So if you carve very close to your hand, you have the maximum control. If you carve like this, you have almost no control. Tip number two. Tip number two is all about how you can stabilize your workpiece. So first step is hold your workpiece in the fist like this. Don't cut in the air like many people do. So much better is support your wrist on the knee like this. Hold the stick in the fist and here you have the maximum stability. Hold the stick as close as possible to the section where you want to work on. So don't hold it like this if you want to make a tip because here you are not stable and you have problems that you can penetrate into the wood because this is wobbling. If you hold the stick as close as possible to the section where you want to work on, and you have again the maximum stability and this is what you need. The last reason why you recommend to put the wrist on the knee is as soon you cut here and this is what many people do. Here in the leg, if you slip off, you can hurt yourself. So, and if you put the wrist on the knee and you slip off, nothing happens. So cut always or work always in front of the knee. So this is the, this is the carving zone. And carve never on your legs. Tip number three, that the knives cut efficiently, it needs a move in two directions. It needs a push move and a sideways move. So if you want to cut a piece of bread, if this is my bread and this is my knife, so you don't cut a slice of bread like this. You cut the slice of bread like this with the sawing action because only if you push the knife sideways, it starts to cut. So many people only push the knife when they are carving. But carving is actually much more a sideways move, like this, like this, like this, a sideways move and not a push move. I can show you the efficiency difference on my finger. So please, dear children, uh, don't copy this. <laughs> so this is a super sharp knife. And now I hammer on my finger. I can hear my bone, nothing happened. But if I make the same, with the same speed and the same force like this, I would have a terrible cut in my finger. And this is exactly the difference between carving like this and carving like this. What physically happens, I'll show you on this model now. This is the cross section of a blade. This is the cutting edge. Here's the spine. This is the wood I want to cut. So, and if you just push the knife without sideways move, I penetrate in a 90 degree angle like this. And like this, you get a big penetration angle. 
sun. But when I penetrate with a push and with a sideways force, I don't penetrate in a 90 degree angle, but I penetrate in an angle like this. And as you can see, the penetration angle is smaller than on a push cut. And the smaller you pull the knife sideways in relation to push it, you can reduce the penetration angle. And that's the physique behind. Tip number four, use the small blade because the small blade has big advantages over the big blade. And I speak about carving wood and not uh, 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 cutting a slice of bread or something else. <laughs> and this is also the difference between the beginner and the pro. The pro knows that the small blade has big advantages and the beginner made all carving tasks with the big blade. Advantage number one is the small blade is in 99% of the cases sharper than the big blade because no one uses it. And you have to know that these shiny side flats have the steeper angle on the small blade than on the big blade. I'll show you this on my goniometer now. So, this is my goniometer which I made in a previous video. The link for the sprinting file you find in the description box below. So I would say we start with the big blade. This one. I hope you can see that. So. so I would say I have two times four degrees and on the primary bevel, secondary bevel, two times 21 degrees. I hope you can see that. Small blade. Primary bevel, I would say two times three and a half degrees and about two times 20 degrees secondary bevel. The flat grind of the small blade is two times a half degree smaller than the flat grind of the big blade. And this is for sure not a disadvantage if you want to cut as easy as possible. Tip number five. So the last tip has to do with dynamics. In my opinion, you can save a lot of energy if your cut is a little explosion like this. Tack. Tack, 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 tack. If you dive slowly into the wood, you need much more strength, in my opinion. And as, as long I don't have to make precision cuts, my cut is like a little explosion. Tack, tack, tack. And like this, you can save a lot of energy. But as soon I have to work precise, I change my carving technique. That's for sure. If you want to learn more about the different techniques of the tools from a Swiss Army knife, and if you need some inspirations for different projects you can do with a Swiss Army knife, you belong to my target group of my books. Three of my carving books I already wrote are available in English. So this is uh, Crafting with the Pocket Knife, the Swiss Army Knife book and the Whittling in the Wild. And this can be a gift for people who like to spend their time in the nature. The links for my books you find in the description box below. So my friends, that's it for today. I hope this was an interesting video for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next Friday. Ciao.